Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. Today I am wearing a hand-knitted cardigan that I made, I don't remember when, <laughs> several years ago. I believe that I based it off, I'm pretty sure, I based it off of the Gigi cardigan, which is a pattern by Devin Ventry of Knitty McPurley, but I'm pretty sure I made a lot of modifications to it. And I will link to the episode where this was a finished object in the description box below if you're curious about more details about how I made this sweater. But I do know that I used six different colors of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight for this cardigan. And I love it. It's like my everyday cardigan. It's the cardigan that I throw on when I'm just lounging around the house. So it gets a ton of wear and I love it. It is just super comfy and cozy and I love that it's 100% wool. It keeps me nice and warm when I'm chilly. So it's great. I have several finished objects to share with you and the first is super exciting because it's been a work in progress for a long time and it's huge. <laughs> so I was able to finish my Faith blanket, which is a pattern by Helen Shrimpton. I'll have to stand up to show it to you in full because it is six foot square. Um, it's a six foot square blanket. Now I did not finish the actual pattern. I cut it short by several rows. I eliminated 12 rounds because it was already plenty big. So I Last time I recorded, I was just finishing up this last light tan colored row. I had run out of yarn and had to go buy another skein of yarn to finish up this last round of the tan color. But then I only needed to add three more rounds and I decided I wanted to get to a point where I was at a you know where it ended with a nice edging and I really liked how this row, which is actually the 84th round of the pattern, how that finished off the blanket with this pattern. And it just seemed to work really well for uh, finishing, you know, to finish it off with that round. And I laid it out and measured it and saw that it was already six feet square. And I was like, that is plenty big for what I need for an Afghan. This is just going to be an Afghan for our family. So, um, you know, it doesn't, I didn't need to finish the pattern or anything. It didn't need to be a certain size. It was just whatever I wanted. And I liked, I liked this size. It's plenty big. Uh, I made this all, well, I started off this blanket hoping it would be a scrappy Afghan. I ended up having to buy I think five different full skeins of yarn to add to this. I didn't have to, but I decided to buy a couple of colors to add as pops of color. For example, this mint color I bought because I wanted a, a pop of that bright mint color to add to it. And then I bought a, a few other skeins to get me through. As I got to the end of making this afghan, it was taking me a lot of yardage to complete around and uh, I mentioned last time that I had bought a brand new skein of this light tan color, um, which I think was a seven ounce skein of Red Heart Super Saver. And it used up the whole skein and I still wasn't able to complete this section. I, like I said, I had to go buy a new skein to finish off that last row. This is all made using worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn that I had in my stash and I wanted just to use it up. And so that was fun to be able to use up a lot of my stash but um you know it wasn't a complete stash buster because I ended up having to buy more yarn to add to it but it did obviously work through a lot of yarn that was in my stash so 
I started this afghan on August 2nd and I finished it on January 29th. I used an I 5.5 millimeter hook and I should mention that this pattern is a free pattern by Helen Shrimpton. She has so many gorgeous afghan patterns. Not all of them are free, but several of them are. So definitely check out her patterns if you haven't already. It was such an enjoyment to make this blanket. I've been crocheting for over 20 years and I learned so much from making this afghan. So many stitches that I'd never tried before um, that I was able to learn so many new techniques that I'd never even seen before that I was able to learn. So that was so much fun to be able to learn a lot of new things throughout the process of making this afghan. So um, I don't even know how many colors I have in this, how many different brands of yarn, but I guess I can kind of show you quickly from the center. This is the center medallion and it is a square, so it's completely, you know, you can get the idea of what it looks like. I don't think I will stand up after all because it's going to be too hard for me to hold it up. So I'm just going to insert, instead, I'm going to insert a picture of it laid out on my floor so you can see what it looks like in its entirety. I think that'll give you a better idea of what it looks like anyway. I'm really, really happy with this. I like how it came together. I was glad to use up scraps of yarn that I had in my stash and work through several yards of yarn. So I'm very happy with that. Yeah, so there were a total of 96 rounds in the original pattern. And as I said, I eliminated 12 of those rounds. So, but I'm just really, really happy with this. I have not yet given it a steam block, which is what I usually do to my, um, any, thing I make, make out of acrylic yarn, I usually give it a steam block and I haven't done that yet. So this edging, it lays pretty flat, but it could, it could do with a steam blocking. And then I've mentioned quite a while ago that some of the yarns that I started off with in the middle of this blanket have started to pill or fuzz already. And so I might also go through and kind of give it a bit of a, I don't know if you can see, it's not too obvious, I guess, on camera, but like that tan one there that is in this raised section, which was just one of those sections that was so interesting to learn how to do this raised section, but you can see how this is really getting quite fuzzy. So I might go through and try to, you know, depill those sections that are a bit fuzzy already. Even this center one, you can see how it's already kind of fuzzing. So I might go through and try to clean those areas up a bit. Um, but overall, like I had said before, those sections, you know, were made at the very beginning and the majority of the blanket is made with that right side laying on top, laying with the right side down on your lap while you're crocheting. Cause it's always worked. I think for the most part, maybe there was like one or two rounds where you're working the wrong side, but for the most part, all of the rounds are worked on the right side. So the, you know, the middle section is constantly being rubbed against your lap as you're working on the blanket. So I guess it's not too surprising that some of these sections, this right here is really fuzzy too. Um, some of these sections are getting a little worse for wear already because it has had a lot of wear as it's been laying on my lap while I've been working on it. So anyway, I'm so thrilled that I was able to finish it up. This is the first project off of my Make 9 list for the Make 9 2024 Mal that I am hosting on Instagram. So this is my first project that I have completed off of my board and I'm very happy to have one of them done. So that is my first finished object. It's very heavy too. As you can imagine, such a big blanket and worsted weight yarn, it's very heavy. <laughs> All right, I was also able to finish these socks that I knitted for my husband. I followed another free pattern, this one by Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs for her, for her DK Vanilla Socks. Let's see, DK Weight Vanilla Socks by Crazy Sock Lady Designs. 
And the yarn that I used is Louisa Harding Yarns Cassia in the silver colorway for the cuffs, heels, and toes, and pine for the main body of the sock. I made the medium size, which is a 48 stitch count, and I used US 3 3.25 millimeter needles. I cast these on on January 6th and finished them on January 21st. I did the two by two ribbing for a little longer than what Kay uh, recommends. I went for 15 rounds. And then just did plain stockinette for, I think the from the cuff to the heel, I think measured, did I write it down? Oh, okay, I did 30 rounds for the leg and then um, went into the heel, slip stitch heel flap. And I followed the pattern. I don't think I made any other modifications except for um, lengthening the cuff. And I think she probably just says knit the leg for as long as you want. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, um, I made these um, obviously to fit my husband's shoe size. So maybe you can tell that they're not terribly baggy, but a little bit baggy on my sock blockers because my husband's shoe size is larger than mine. I used a total of 77 grams, and I think they're really fun. I have made socks for my husband in the past, but I've never made them, I've always made them shorty socks because that's what he had asked for in the past, but this time he asked for a little bit longer of a leg, and so I'm excited to see if he'll enjoy wearing these. Hopefully he will. <laughs> but I like how they turned out. I think they're really classic and fun looking. So super happy with those. I haven't made a pair of DK weight socks in a very, very long time. So it was really gratifying to be able to make a pair of socks. You know, they worked up pretty quickly. So this yarn is 75% wool, super wash wool and 25% nylon. I also finished my second pair of scrappy socks using the leftovers that I had from my Knit Picks Felici socks that I knit throughout last year. So I had saved a bunch of the, well, all of the scraps that I had left over from my Knit Picks Felici socks and I love how these turned out. I think the colors turned out so cohesively on this pair of socks. So this is the second pair. I made one pair using January through June. No, yes, January through June, the yarns that I used for my January through June socks. And then these are using July through December. So we have, well, I started off with 60 stitches using US Zero two millimeter needles and the um, contrast for the he uh, cuffs, heels and toes is a mini skein that I received um, from a viewer of this channel named Joy. And it is a mini skein, it came from a mini skein set dyed by Autumn and Indigo. All of this yarn is 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. I did two by one ribbing for 20 rounds and then went into just plain stockinette. These first two stripes are from my July colorway. I'm not going to name off all the colorways because I won't be able to remember them all. But then uh, August went through from this color to this, uh, this orangey color. Then September was this pink to this deep purple. I thought it was so interesting that this, um, even when I was making my September socks, that this one purple stripe is like double wide of what the stripes normally are. But anyway, then the October colorway is this pink and white stripe. And then November was the orange and a tiny, tiny bit of pink that really faded well into my December colorway, which is the darker pink here. I don't know if you can tell, but the pinks kind of fade into each other there. And then the December colorway are these last two stripes. Anyway, I did a slip stitch heel flap again for these. And I added in the slip stitch detail that I always put in my own socks on the ball of my foot. It's very similar to what I would put into a slip stitch heel flap, 
just put it on the ball of my foot for the last 30 rounds before I do my toe decreases and that just helps to prevent me wearing holes in that section of my foot. So it's like I said, very similar to what you would do in a heel flap, um, but I'm just doing it flat on the bottom of the, well, I'm, as I'm working around, I'm just working the slip stitch pattern on the ball of my foot. I was surprised that that 20 gram mini that I had from Ottoman Indigo was able to put in a full uh, cuff, heels, and toes. And in fact, the toes, I think I did like two or three extra just plain stockinette rounds before I started my toe decreases because my um, my December yarn was gonna change to green. <laughs> and I didn't want to have the green in this color scheme because it was looking so cohesive with all of these purples and pinks and gold colors that the green was just gonna look out of place, I thought, to have this tiny, I only had room for like three rows of the green color. So I decided just to go to my toe color instead. Anyway, I was surprised that, that 20 gram mini was enough to cover all of those sections. So that was surprising. I don't think I've ever tried that before. Maybe it weighed a little more than 20 grams or something. I didn't weigh it beforehand, but anyway. Very, very happy with these uh, scrappy socks and I'm happy that it was just fun to be able to work through all of those yarns again. So I enjoyed the process of making those so much. I have one more almost finished object. I'm counting it as a finished object. I just have to get buttons to add to it. I looked through my button stash and I couldn't find anything that I liked that would fit. And so I need to go to the store and buy five little buttons to add to this sweet little cardigan. Here it is. I made this um, as my uh, husband's grandmother, who is 94, called and asked if I would please make a baby cardigan for a family friend. And so I was happy to do that for a newborn baby girl. She asked specifically for a pink cardigan. And she, I had, if you remember uh, in December, I believe, uh, I think it was December, maybe, maybe it was November. But anyway, at the end of last year, I had made another pink cardigan for a cousin, in, one of my husband's cousins, uh, one of her children. And I used the same yarn and I had leftovers of it. So I was able to use that same yarn to make this cardigan. So it worked out really well. This is another free pattern. It is called the Deary Cardigan. And the designer is Seventh Sedge. And I used a YouTube tutorial that walked me through how to make this. I um, That wasn't my favorite way of following a pattern. I ended up just taking a bunch of screenshots because it's a silent video she, the, well, I'm assuming it's a female. I didn't really pay attention. I think it is according to her. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the designer, um, just has a video of them making the cardigan. And then at the bottom of the video, they have, uh, written out the instructions for what you're supposed to do. So I ended up just taking screenshots of all the instructions and following the pattern that way, instead of following the video, because it was just easier to do it that way for me anyway. Um, I forgot to mention my socks. I started the Felici Scrappy Socks on January 9th and I finished them on January 26th. For this cardigan, I started it on January 19th and finished it on January 28th. And the yarn that I have used here is Karen Simply Soft in Soft Pink. So it's a worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. I used the recommended needles, which were US 4, 3.5 millimeter needles and it worked up pretty quickly. I think the stitch is a um, broken seed stitch, I believe. So since it's a free pattern, I think it's okay to say, but you do two rows of seed stitch and then you do two rows of plain stockinette. So I think that's what it's called is broken seed stitch. And that was really fun to do. I enjoyed making, working up that stitch. And I think it, the texture is just so, so nice. And as you can see, all of the 
um, the edging is all done in garter stitch, which I really enjoy the looks of that. I think it's really cute. You make the button band as you are going along, so it's all done in one piece, which is really nice. It's knit from the top down. And it has five buttonholes. So I just need to find five little buttons that will look cute. I thought I want to either get, well, if I can find a pink button that matches, that'd be great. Or um, white would be cute, or even like a clear or crystal type button would be cute. I had some wooden buttons in my stash that would have worked, but I just didn't like, I thought it needed something softer than wood on this light pink color. I didn't like how the wood wooden button looked with the pink, so. Anyway, I think it's super cute. This is the, a newborn size, and that's the only size that this, the instructions come in for the YouTube tutorial anyway. I think that's all I have to say for this one. Super happy with it. So I'm excited to gift this to the family friend that I made it for. All right, those are all of my finished objects. On to my works in progress. My first project is being, well, the yarn is being held in this beautiful bag that I was gifted from a viewer of this channel named Denise. And it was made by a different, um, Denise did not make this bag, she just gifted me the bag, but the bag was made by Longview Creations. And again, I'm just holding all of the yarn in there for my Ariana cardigan, which is another free pattern by Amy Christoffers. And this is another project from my Make Nine list. And I was able to make six more squares to add to my Ariana cardigan. I am modifying the pattern quite a bit with this. I'm using fingering weight yarn. The original pattern calls for worsted weight yarn. And I, in the original pattern, well, in the original pattern, each square is matching. All of my squares are different because I am using a total of 14 different colorways for my cardigan. I'm making my original squares just using 13 colors and I'm mixing and matching all of those colors, changing color every round for my granny squares. And then the final color, the 14th color will be my joining color that I'll do for joining all of the squares together. And then I'm also planning on using that colorway for the bands, the you know button bands and everything. So I, since I'm using fingering weight yarn, I'm using a smaller hook, of course. I am using a 2.75 millimeter hook. And I'm instead of doing five rounds, as the original pattern calls for you to do when making the um, squares, I am doing a total of eight rounds. Um, I did um, decide to do, I will be doing um, one more round using that joining color before I actually join my squares. So all of these squares will have one more round added to them before they're joined, but they will all be, my joining color will have a total of two rounds around each square, if that makes sense. So that, um, that kind of makes up for the fact that I'm using fingering weight again to join my squares instead of the worsted weight. I started a new project using worsted weight yarn so that I could kind of see the difference of how the worsted weight square compares to the fingering weight square. And I'll show you that uh, project in a little bit. But anyway, I have decided to go ahead and do two rounds after, uh, while I'm joining them. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, I haven't had a chance to block these new squares that I've made, which I guess is kind of cool for you guys to be able to see the difference that they make. So I mentioned this last time that they, when I finish making a square, they're quite curled up, but I just soak them in plain water. I don't even use any soap or anything at this point. I just soak them in uh, lukewarm water for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I just lay them flat on a towel to dry. And once they're blocked, then this is one of the squares you guys have already seen in a previous episode they lay super flat and beautiful. But I just wanted to share with you the squares that I have made since last time. And 
and I just love mixing and matching all of these colors so that no two squares are alike. It's so much fun to see the different color combinations. I, um, after each round and using a granny square, I flip my work. I always do that when I'm making granny squares and I also crochet over all of my ends whenever I'm making granny squares. So I don't have any, I don't have a ton of ends to weave in. I just have the ends from this last round and those will be crocheted over when I do the next round as I'm joining them. So those are the six that I have finished since I recorded last. So I need to give those a block so that they're all ready to go. And now I have a total of 24 squares done. And I need to get a total of 48 full squares done. And then there's also half squares or triangles and half triangles that I need to do as well. But I'm halfway through the full square quota of what I need to make. So I'm making headway. I should mention all of the yarn that is going into these squares. Well, all but two of the yarns are Knit Picks Palette, which is again, fingering weight, 100% non-superwash, Peruvian Highland wool, and then the other two yarns that I'm adding in are called Yarns Brunswick, which is also 100% virgin wool, pure, vir pure virgin wool. So that work in progress is coming along really well. It's super fun to work on those squares. I just enjoy it so much. The next project that I am working on from my Make 9 board is being held in this wool bag and it is my granny's daughter afghan, which is another scrappy afghan. I haven't done a ton of progress on this afghan since I showed you last. I've only added one more row or strip to this afghan, and it will be the bottom row on the screen. So this, I originally started this project I don't remember when, I'll look it up in a minute, but a long time ago and I had to make 836 of these little one round granny squares. And now I have the pleasure of joining them all together, which is so much fun. So let me find my notes on this one. I started this on July 24th of 2022. And I started joining the strips. Um, well, I finished all of the motifs, all of the first round motifs on December 26th of 2023. So I've just started joining them into the strips here. And I'm enjoying the process of working on this so much. So the way that um, it is done right now, I am using an, a G four millimeter hook and the joining yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks Brava in the almond colorway, which all of these yarns are 100% acrylic worsted weight yarns again. And I, the way that you uh, join these strips is you crochet along one edge, joining all of these little um, squares. And then as you're working back along the second side of the strip, then you join the strip to the afghan. I'm modifying the way that in which that I am joining my strips. It's different than what the pattern calls for, but I am just doing one round of the joining yarn color. The original pattern calls for two rounds. I've eliminated that second round and I am using a slip stitch to join my strips together as I crochet along. And it's a ton of fun. Again, I'm crocheting over all of my ends as I work on this. So you would, you know, it's not so bad. I just, as I, as I join the little squares, I crochet over all the ends and I just love doing that. So I don't have a ton of ends to weave in. All the, the only ends I have to weave in are on this, this one side, which it'll have a border. So I'll just crochet over these ends when I add the border as well. 
So I just love this one so much. It's so fun and colorful and it just brings me a ton of joy to work on this project. But I haven't put a lot of work into it lately, so I'm excited to put some more work into it, focus on it a little bit more. Now that I have the Faith Afghan done, I can focus on this Afghan a little bit more. Um, my last project that is on my Make 9 board that I have put work into is being held in this project bag that I sewed myself. And this is, I have it written down now, what this pattern is called. It is called the Triangle Garter Wrap, which is a free pattern by Pearl Soho. And I have put in a little bit of work. This is a slow growing project, so it's not got a ton of extra added to it, but a little bit. And every little bit counts. So this is just a super simple uh, pattern. Uh, just plain garter stitch and you're just increasing every row you just increase by one stitch you do slip the first stitch of each row so you get a pretty good clean edge on the sides here I am modifying this pattern also I am using lace weight yarn instead of fingering weight yarn which the original pattern calls for I'm using knit picks aloft which is 72% Super Kid Mohair, 28% Silk. And right now I'm using the colorway white. I have uh, three other colors that I will be using in doing some color blocks throughout the pattern. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna be using up this one 50, is this 50 grams or 25? I think it's 25. Yeah, 25 grams. So I'm next color I'm gonna be working into is this silvery color called Plover. So I'm just working through this entire 25 gram ball of yarn. And I'm also, of course, changed the needle size. I'm using US 5 3.75 needles. And I'm following the pattern as far as, you know, I'm following the pattern besides the change of weight and needles, um, the change of yarn weight and the needle size. I'm following the pattern for now, but I won't be for the entirety of the project. My plan is to make this into a square eventually. So I'm going to continue working through my yarn until I get to the size that I want it to be. And then I'm going to be decreasing my um, stitches and making it into a square eventually. That's my plan anyway. <laughs> but anyway, it's a super simple project, but I still have found that I can't knit on this without looking at it because of Knitting with mohair is just not comfortable for me yet. I'm not used to working with a single strand of mohair. Um, so it, it's an easy project, but I do have to look at my work. So I can't watch a movie while I work on this or anything like that. So, But still, it's a nice project to have on the go that I don't have to think about. Anyway, I guess I didn't mention, but that progress keeper there is marking where I was last time I recorded. So I've just added a couple more inches to it. But since it's lace weight, you know, a couple of inches is takes a while. <laughs> okay, I have two more works in progress. The first one is probably the most boring thing I could ever show you, but it's in a beautiful bag <laughs> by Danielle of Midwest Stitches. She gifted this to me last year, and I love it. I use it so often, especially for socks, which is what is in here. But this is the most boring pair of socks I think I could ever make. But it's something that I need in my <laughs> in my wardrobe. It is a plain pair of black stockinette socks. <laughs> so not exciting at all, but I made a pair of black socks for myself a couple of years ago and I lost one of the black socks. I don't know how I did that. I, I washed my socks in like a um, lingerie bag and I just wash them in the machine and then I hang them up on a drying rack to dry. And I'm confident that I hung up both of my black socks on the drying rack. And then when I went to get them off of the drying rack, there was only one sock and I have looked for it and I cannot find the second black sock. So I'm making myself a new pair of black socks. Kind of frustrating, but that's okay. They're, you know, my, actually my only, this is my only project that I have as an actual mindless project that I don't have to look at. I can knit these without even looking. So 
it's nice to have a plain stockinette project like that that I don't have to worry about. I am using, I believe I dyed this yarn myself. So it is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I cast on 60 stitches, did two by one ribbing for 20 rounds again, but you can't see it because it's black. <laughs> and I'm just doing plain stockinette uh, US zero two millimeter needles. And they're gonna be super plain and boring, but that's another project I'm working on. And then my final work in progress is the worsted weight project that I mentioned that I wanted to start to compare the fingering weight granny squares to what the original Ariana cardigan by Amy Christoffers calls for using worsted weight. So I just want, I was just going to make up one square just to compare it to what I had been making with the fingering weight. And I had gone through my, after I finished my faith Afghan, I had gone through my worsted weight scraps and I still have quite a bit and I was kind of sorting them out into colors and things like that and I decided well since I'm making a square I might as well make a baby blanket because I love crocheting baby blankets so that's what I'm doing so I put together all of my pastel colors and then I have um, paired it with some neutral colors as well and here is my baby blanket I have come up with so far. So I started off just making these three. Is that right? It doesn't really matter, I guess. But I think, yeah, I think I started off with these three squares right here. And then I was watching the most recent episode by Sarah of It Is a Sarah podcast. And she was sharing all of her afghans that she has made. And she has a granny square afghan that she oriented to be turned on the diagonal and then squared it off with triangle half square uh, pieces. And I thought that would be really fun to do for this Afghan as well. So I decided to do that. So that's why you see these triangle pieces along the sides here. And I think it's really fun to have it oriented at, you know, with the diagonal instead. So right now, I kind of just want to get to the point where I have the, the width and the length to the right size that I want it, and then I'm going to you know fill in the rest. But it's coming along really well. I'm enjoying this. And this was really helpful because then I could compare these squares to um, the Ariana card again. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So I... Um, the original Ariana cardigan calls for you to do five rounds of a granny square and then the joining round is your sixth round. So that's what I've done here as well. And I could see that I really probably want to do two more rounds when, you know, to add to these squares to get it to the right size. And I had thought about putting in a ninth change of color round on my Ariana cardigan squares and then just doing the final joining round in the final color. But I thought giving it two rounds for that border will kind of, I thought that would look nice to have more of a substantial um, border in that, in that solid color that I'm gonna be using like a beige color for the joining on those. Anyway, I did not intend to really have this project go further than a couple of squares to compare it to the Ariana cardigan, but now I've just gotten excited about seeing how this is gonna work up. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this project. I'm using a G four millimeter hook and following the same process as I am for the Ariana cardigan where I turn my round every time I start a new round, I switch colors every round, I crochet over all my ends as always. And I am just doing a join as you go uh, slip stitch method as I join these squares as well. I do have a lot of ends on the edges here. I'm not used to making these half squares. They're kind of bloopy right here. They have kind of a bump on the middle part, but I think it'll be okay once I add the edging. I can kind of straighten them out. Um... I think they'll be okay, 
hopefully I'll be able to work up an edging that will get this to be a little bit straighter instead of so wavy. But anyway, I should be able to crochet over these ends as well. This is the last one that I added and I was able to get rid of a lot of those ends by crocheting over them now that I've gotten more used to making those triangles. But anyway, I'm enjoying this progress or this process of making this blanket a lot. It's super fun. I don't have a ton of some of these yarns, so I'm a little bit, you know, I'm not sure if I'll be able to, how I'll be able to do uh, dispersing the colors that I do have evenly. Um, but as you can kind of see, I've tried to make it pretty, um, I've tried to space out my colors quite a bit um, so that, you know, they'll be evenly dispersed. But like I said, I might run out of some of these yarns. I'm just using tiny little scraps of yarn. So anyway, it's a fun project to work on. And like I said, I just love, it's probably, I've said this before, but Afghans, baby Afghans are probably up there in my favorite thing to make. I just really enjoy the process of making a small little baby blanket. It's like a tiny little, you know, I love making blankets, but taking on a whole blanket can be a bit daunting sometimes, even though I have a lot of them in, in the works always. But baby blankets are just more manageable because they're so small, so it's fun to try new patterns and color combos and things like that. I do have one more thing to share with you all. I was surprised with a big box of yarn that was sent by another viewer of this channel named Jacqueline. And this is not the first time that I have been gifted a beautiful, huge box of yarn. And it blows me away every single time. I am just so incredibly grateful that anyone would send yarn my way. And it helps out so much as I um, am able to give gifts to those of you who are participating in the Make Nine 2024 Mal. Um, so I am just so incredibly grateful. Uh, thank you so much, Jackie. I appreciate you sending all of this yarn my way and I want to share it with you all. So I have unpacked it and then repacked it. So it's kind of all in reverse order, but that doesn't matter, I guess. Um, the first yarn I have to share with you, she sent six skeins of Knit Picks Brava Worsted Weight in the Cherry Speckle colorway which is it's not showing up very well because it's so bright. But anyway, it is just this light pink and then it's got these specks of red and kind of a raspberry color. This is 100% premium acrylic. So that will be fun. I'm thinking I will... Uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. I'm planning on working this up into a baby blanket. <laughs> I think that'll be the only yarn that I keep for myself though, because the rest of the yarn is so um, special and I want to share it with those of you who have been participating in the make along. And I will have more details about the make along in the description box if you're not familiar with it. Okay, I'm gonna take this out of this plastic bag. She sent four skeins of, or hanks, I guess I should say, of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is American Targi Columbia wool in the plume colorway. Look at how gorgeous that is. I believe this is, yeah, worsted weight, it says right there. I wasn't, I hadn't remembered what that was. It's worsted weight, and I think this is a 50 gram skein, so there's a total of 200 grams that she sent and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it so much. And she sent two skeins of opal sock yarn. The first one is from, oh, I'm probably not gonna be able to say what I should for these. Okay, I guess I don't know what to say. Um, I was gonna try to tell you like what um, line this was from, but I'm not really sure what what tells us that. <laughs> Maybe if I compare them. Okay, so I'm, I'm still not really sure. I'm not gonna try. Here's the first skein. 
It is color number 9776. And there is a picture of how it knits up. It's so beautiful. Isn't that lovely? These are both 75%. Let's see, I'm sure it's 75-25, but let me double check. If I can find it. 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide. Um, I don't know how to organize these so I don't lose track of what I've shown you. Okay. The next one is color number 5525. So gray and blue colors. Very pretty. That's how it should knit up. Not that you can see that very clearly, sorry, but <laughs> you get an idea. Okay, also a skein of active yarn, which is, I think, also a German yarn. And let's see. Yes, it is a German yarn. 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide again. And the color, I'm not sure, maybe 5668. Here's the numbers that it has on there. And there's how it should knit up. Really fun colors in that one. We've got two skeins of a homespun house yarn in this a homespun house bag as well. And they're matching. They are both on a non-superwash merino fingering weight base. And the color weight is called Butter Pecan. There are two 50 gram skeins of Premier Cotton Collage. The color is called Brown Multi. And this is fingering weight. 46% cotton, 33% superwash fine merino wool, and 12% 12, 12 polyamide, and 9% PBT, which is a type of polyamide as well. Super pretty colors in those as well. There is a skein of yarn here that's been already caked up. And this is dyed by Shangri, Shangri La by Ching Fiber. Colorway is called Papaya. It's on a Donegal sock base, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% colorful nips. Very fun. Uh, she also sent a, another uh, sock. Uh, this is a sock set that's already been caked up, dyed by Legacy Fiber Arts. Isn't it beautiful? colors in those are so pretty. This is called Golden Hour and it's a micro sock kit on the steel toes base which is a four ply fingering weight 75% superwash merino 25% nylon and you get 50 grams in the larger cake and 20 gram a 20 gram mini. There is one hank here that doesn't have a label on it. I would I would I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that this would be a sock yarn though. I could try to double check with Jacqueline to ask her for sure, but um, it is just this gorgeous green color. I love it so much, but I would assume that it's a 75-25. That's what it looks and feels like to me, but it doesn't have a label on it at all. So There is this gorgeous hank of yarn by Expression Fiber Arts on the um, let's see, the colorway is called Laguna. It's a superwash merino silk pearlescent fingering weight, which is, well, it doesn't tell you the makeup of the yarn on the label, but um, it has, you know, merino and silk content in there, and it's a single ply. It has 550 yards, so it's quite a bit of yardage there. And this gorgeous color, so pretty. There is this beautiful hank from Hedgehog Fibers in the plume colorway as well. The Brooklyn uh, shelter, Brooklyn tweed shelter that I showed you was also a plume colorway. Anyway, um, this one is 90% merino wool, 10% nylon. It's also a fingering weight yarn.
Here's a fun sock set from Buxom Cat Knits. And this colorway is called Marshmallow Christmas. It's on an 80-20, so 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And you get a total of 115 grams. So I'm not sure how they've divided that up, but this seems like it'd be 100 grams, and this looks like a 20 gram, but one of them must be less than that. <laughs> anyway, super fun colors in this sock set. This is by Gypsy Soul Fibers, and the colorway is called Daffodils. It's on a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon sock base. It'll be fun for spring. There is a cake of uh, Shopful Gradient yarn. Um, and I don't know if I have much information to share with you on this. It says light blue is the colorway. Um, let's see. A lot of this is in German, so I'm having a hard time. Oh, it's 100% virgin wool. I don't know the weight, though. I'm not sure. I would guess DK would be my guess. Maybe worsted. But I don't see where it says that at all. It's 100 grams, 260 meters. So I think that's about right. Worsted to DK somewhere around in there. Anyway, fun blue colors in there. Um, a skein of yarn from Wild Star Fibers in the Shooting Star colorway. This is on an 85 Superwash Merino 15% nylon base fingering weight. So vibrant. Knit Style Yarns. This super fun bright colorway called Garden Sunset. It's on a 75. Oh, that's funny. It says 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon. But that only adds to nine that only adds up to 95%. So Probably they meant to write 25% nylon, I bet. Spun right round merino worsted in the caterpillar colorway, which is 100% superwash merino. There is this fun um, hand dyed self striping matching sock kit by Earth Yarns and Oh my goodness, so fun. Look at that picture of how it's supposed to knit up. You get two matching cakes in this little box. So much fun. It is 75% extra fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon sock weight yarn. And then lastly, I have four skeins of yarn from A Girl and Her Wool. This first one is called Bouquet 7525, fingering weight. This one is called Mystic, same base. This one is called Speckled Orchid. That's beautiful. And that again is the same 7525 base. And then this last one is a little bit smaller. It is the same base, but I believe it's only a 80 gram skein. And this one is called October 2022 Mystery. So gorgeous. So that is everything that she sent my way and that will be the majority of that will be sent off to those of you who have who are going to be participating in the Make Nine. Maybe I'll get to it in 2024. I do have a lot of yarn yet to give away from um, another viewer that sent me yarn. So I'm going to be giving away that yarn first and then I'll be going on to this beautiful box of yarn and gifting this all to those of you who are participating in the 
make 9 2024 mal along the way um i i periodically draw prizes for those who are participating in the make along throughout the year so stay tuned if you are interested in hoping to win any of that yarn that i shared with you and again thank you so so very much jacqueline i appreciate your generosity so much so that is all that i have to share with you all today i hope you really enjoyed watching what i had to share with you and i hope you all are doing really well take care everybody bye bye